We're getting richer, baby. It's the end of week 15, so let's get this party started, although my light does not work. Kosovo is projected to have the strongest economic growth in the Western Balkan during this year and next year, according to the World Bank. This makes perfect sense since we are also the most democratic and the happiest country here as well. Meanwhile, there's only violent news from our autocratic and delusional neighbor, Serbia, who just does not want to be in this decade or stay on their side of the border. But before I dive into all of that, I need you to do something even more important for me if you're from Kosovo. Registrations are now open for the diaspora to register themselves and their family members online, so please, please, please use this link to do so. It takes five minutes and it helps us document how many were driven out of our beautiful country and how far we've all come. I have also put this link in my Instagram bio, same handle as wherever you're watching this video from. And you can also start applying to the Citizen Diplomacy Program now as well. If you're a young professional from the diaspora who wants to work for our various ministries for 10 months, I have a lot of friends in this program. It's really great, so apply here. And a news report exposing the systemic discrimination against Albanians in the Presheva Valley has earned a Swiss Press Award nomination. This is all great news as it might bring awareness to which minority is actually suffering and which country is to blame, but I'll talk more about that because there are also some concerns for our security here in Kosovo. The Serbian military presence at our border is massively increasing as shown in this video. Meanwhile, Serbia is once again encouraging Serbs living in Kosovo to boycott our elections again, and we just found a bomb under a vehicle in Kosovo that was put there by Serbs, again. What do I mean by all this? So last year, Serbs living in Kosovo were ordered by Serbia's president to not vote in our local elections. And although we did everything in our power to make it safe for them to do so, and their actual president, Josef Osmani, also encouraged them to do so, they were still too scared. Which makes perfect sense because Serbs who do try to do something good for Kosovo get killed or tortured, even if they try to participate in local politics, as was the case with Oliver Ivanovic and Nikola Sandulovic as well, and many others. The thing is, just because you don't vote doesn't mean the results don't count. So this boycott resulted in three Albanian mayors and one Bosnian mayor because everyone else who lives in these municipalities did vote. The problem, however, is that in those small towns, the majority are Serbs, which is why it would make sense for them to have Serb mayors from Kosovo. But again, they did not vote or run, although they were encouraged to do so. So logically, because they did not vote, after the mayors were installed, Serbia then sent in hundreds of terrorists who attacked 90 NATO officers, killed an Albanian police officer from Kosovo, injured journalists, police, you name it, and burned vehicles and property. One young NATO officer even had to have his leg amputated. Because of all this terror, EU sanctioned Kosovo, not Serbia, because we followed the constitution that the EU helped write for us. We were then asked for re-elections, again by the EU, and told that it is our job to make Serbia less autocratic, which we have been trying to do our whole lives, but you can't. After all this terror, after we are ready to host our new elections, Serbia now orders another boycott. Guess we must prepare for more sanctions on Kosovo then. So why the bombs and military at our border? Well, to further intimidate Serbs in Kosovo from voting and participating in our democracy, Serbia keeps using violence and terror because it's the only language they speak. On Tuesday, a bomb was discovered beneath a vehicle in the northern part of Kosovo. Our police safely removed the device, specifically our EOD specialists, together with American specialists from Kvod, who were also on the scene. Kosovo's interior minister then shared this video and declared that the efforts of the Vucic regime to intimidate Kosovo Serbs are just destined to fail. It's also quite funny how much talk there is of the discrimination of Serbs in Kosovo, who actually have the most rights of any citizen in Kosovo, even more rights than the 93% majority, which is Albanians. Which brings me to the rights of Albanians living in Serbia, which for the most part are fully ignored by the international community. A news report exposing this systemic discrimination against Albanians in the Presheva Valley has even earned a Swiss Press Award nomination. The report, authored by Peter Balzili and Kostrem Kadrio, was developed for the Swiss public broadcaster. While this recognition does not change the ongoing human rights issues faced by Albanians in Serbia. We hope that it will at least raise awareness because I pray that the international community will soon provide the support that they deserve as they literally have no rights. 
If you're in doubt, here's a comparison of how both minorities are treated in each country. And I'm sorry for being so angry, but these ne wouldn't you be? Okay, I want to end this on a positive note. So this week, the Kosovo Diplo 365 platform was launched. This initiative is the result of a cooperation between the government of the Republic of Kosovo, respectively the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora and the IPCO Foundation. This platform is dedicated to sharing the story of our young republic's achievements straight from the hearts of our citizens, and anyone can send in their contributions on the webpage. So good job, everyone, and here's the webpage. Lastly, a lot of great things have happened and we have many Albanians we can be proud of. But today I just want to highlight these two Albanians and all the great things they're doing for Sweden. Uh, big congratulations to Adnan Dibroni, who has become the first Albanian MP in Sweden. And to Orver Goshi for currently serving in the local government in Sweden as well. Tak so mycket, or as we would say in Denmark, mange tak. I clearly do not speak Swedish, so I'm very sorry, you guys. I hope you enjoyed these news and if you want to learn more, make sure to engage with this video and follow me on any platform you want. And I'm usually not this angry, I promise, but this week has got me riled up and I also have a cold, so my voice is a bit off. I'm very sorry. You do a shum. Bye. <laughs>